What's going on, Badger Nation? Welcome to the PPC Den Podcast, your home for all things Amazon PPC, Amazon Advertising, home of the longest running Amazon PPC Podcast. Today I am joined by, I'm, I'm privileged to call her a friend, uh, agency owner, f- co-founder of Better AMS, Destiny. How are you doing? I am doing incredibly well. Um, incredibly well? Incredibly well. You need to share. You need to share why. This is the earliest morning podcast I think we've ever recorded. It is 4.30 a.m. right now. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) That's how much we love all of you. Yes. Um, I just had an espresso, so I would say that's the source of my happiness right now. Amen. Well, let's ride that wave right into uh, this podcast today. Uh, Although that'd be an interesting idea for a show. It's like Amazon advertising, 4.30 a.m. live stream. Tune in, everybody. I'm like, we're like waking up. Uh, what's the fr- <laughs> talking about uh, PPC nightmares that we have that we've had. <laughs> I'm stoked to talk about this topic, and I will. So this is a topic. This is a recurring. Speaking of recurring things, whether it be a recurring nightmare, recurring dreams, whatever it might be, this is a common recurring theme. I think anytime we talk. Uh, and here's some behind the scenes stuff. Anytime I record a podcast with anybody, we spend some time catching up. Uh, how's life? How's your dog? What's up? Uh, and we talk, we we catch up and then we often just start sharing like what's most up and most prevalent for us. And for you and I, a lot of times it's a lot uh, centered around a lot of these KPIs. So we're going to do, be doing another dive on, KPIs that really matter for PPC management, as well as some new tools that influence these, that give you some more insight into them, as well as some, if you know, if you're working with a PPC agency, freelancer, VA, you have somebody on your team who's managing your PPC, or if you're doing your PPC yourself, I think also touching on some misconceptions around how to influence these and sort of misconceptions around some of the responsibility of those metrics. And this sort of was initiated, uh, I was having a conversation with someone and uh, they're like, oh, I want to boost my BSR. I'm going to develop a PPC plan around that. And I was like, hey, that's cool. What else are you doing outside the world of PPC to boost your BSR? Or like someone said they were coming up with a organic ranking plan. And it's like, they're like, I'm going to do all these things. I'm going to do a single keyword campaign with a big top of search exact match. And that's going to be my organic ranking plan. And I was like, cool. What else are you going to be doing for your organic ranking plan? So sort of touching on these metrics is such a, is, why, why do you think this is a recurring theme for us? It seems, it seems so natural and easy for us to talk about. And, and it's always up. It's always on, on top of our minds. You know, I think there's probably two things that have really driven the conversation in this direction. One, in terms of service changes, as we all know, Uh, made it more difficult. And I don't think that's a bad thing per se. I think it shifted away from rank manipulation and giveaways to, hey, you actually need to build an audience and build a brand. And that's really hard for people to do. It's really hard to capture those emails, build a funnel, to layer in the audiences from all the other platforms. So it's a lot easier to go to your PPC manager and say, hey, bid on these keywords. And I know you and I have both talked on these ranking strategies because our last podcast was actually on tacos and how you lower your tacos. And in order to do that, you decrease spin or increase some organic rank. So when you do have us being some of the thought leaders in the space, pushing these organic strategies, I think a lot of people just bank on that. And they're like, hey, I heard Michael say this. I heard Destiny say this. This is the focus. This is what we need to do. But I think we are also very siloed in Amazon advertising. And we also know that when you zoom out, there's so much more that goes into organic ranking. And if you're going to have that conversation about PPC influencing rank, you have to be willing to understand the associated cost, which is a little bit of the direction you and I wanted to go with this podcast is what KPIs can you control with Amazon advertising and what KPIs do you need to focus on as a brand builder? Because we've said it once and we'll say it a million times, PPC does not make your product great. It's a very small piece of the puzzle, but it's one of the most complicated pieces. So people, I think, like to weight it a little heavier than everything else. For sure. The, the way I like to think about it is, you know, imagine uh, the head of the company at an e-commerce brand is having a board meeting with all the 
key players on the of their Amazon growth team. And they've got copywriters, they've got data analysts, they've got uh, an organic reach person, they've got a market an analyst, they've got their PPC person. And you know the, the leader of this meeting would say something like, what are we gonna do to grow 25% this year? And then they'd go around the table and each person would contribute like their unique expertise. And you would never expect like, you know, the, the market analyzer to be responsible for your CPCs in your PPC account in the same way that you shouldn't only depend on PPC when it comes to talking about organic ranking or talking about your position in the market. So I think like, I think what I hope to do with this episode is to really sort of make clear what those KPIs are like when you're in that board meeting. And again, you might be the entire growth team of your Amazon company, uh, or you might have an Amazon PPC freelancer, VA agency, whatever, uh, and you might be working with a variety of uh, contractors. It's like knowing what questions to ask each person is a huge skill, and we're gonna sharpen that saw a little bit. So with that, let's transition to getting into some of these metrics. So, One of the most important conversations I think there is to have is pulling your tacos month over month on the brand level. We're going to start with the brand level. And then when people take a look at their tacos, it's easy to say, hey, I have a 20% tacos. We need to make a change. But I think the secondary metric to then look at is your advertising sales versus your organic sales, because that's going to paint a really good picture of what you should do next. If you see a high tacos and then you also see that Amazon ads are making up 60% of your sales, the moment you pull back on your Amazon spend, your overall sales are going to drop. Like it, it's pretty tightly correlated. And I think that's an important understanding to have so that way you can better make a decision. So if you're in that position, you need to look at your account and say, Hey, I need to improve my organic sales not decrease my ad spend because I'm so heavily leveraged. Now, cannibalization is a whole different topic and it's very possible. But I think that's kind of the number one indicator we start with is that tacos number and then the percentage of ad sales to organic sales. And then we make sure we're not just hemorrhaging spend in an unnecessary ways and typically we are not. So it's like that then leads us to the organic side of the equation. Mm -hmm. For sure. I, I, so again, a perfect example when we're in, you know, that theoretical board meeting, talking to all these growth players and you have an imbalance in organic and paid revenue. The first thing we should do is like go around the table and ask why these things are happening. And like, you will pull out like, okay, PPC is doing this organics doing this. What levers do we have available to pull on is a very important thing to know who's going to pull on what lever. So as we sort of get into some of these metrics, I mean, total ACoS is one of them. So I think when it comes to that conversation and we're going around the table asking people, to me, most PPC KPIs and most things that the PPC team is responsible for either fit into one or two buckets. It's like budget and visibility Mm -hmm. and conversions. And like, I think the big ones for budget and visibility are like controlling how much we spend, uh, controlling impressions, clicks, uh, targeting placements, CPC, how much we're paying. Um, CTR has some caveats there in the budget and visibility. And and then in the conversion bucket, we have like ACOS, ROAS, orders, conversion rate. And conversion rate also has a big asterisk too. Um, and we'll start with the most sort of confusing ones, which I think are CTR and conversion rate, which, ha- which have these big asterisks. Um, I know why, <laughs> I mean, we both, we both know why these things have these asterisks. Do you want to take conversion rate or a click through rate? <laughs> I'll take conversion rate. Okay. Uh, I'll, so I'll start with click through rate. <laughs> um, so the reason it's a different kind of metric than impressions, clicks, budget, targeting CPC is that it is a, out of all these budget and visibility metrics, it's the one that's most heavily influenced by non PPC factors. So the way that CTR, which of course is the ratio of how many clicks you get per impressions, the reason why it's such a mixed metric is because what 
influences click-through rate so much. On the PPC side, it's where you're targeting what your placement is. If you're only targeting product pages, you're gonna have a really low click-through rate. If you're targeting auto campaigns, you're probably gonna have a really low click-through rate. And that being said, what also influences is, whoa, influences it even more significant is gonna be product image, product title, star rating, pricing, both independent as well as how it stands out with the rest of the competition. That's gonna be way more influential than you know, the targeting because if all things being equal, meaning your targeting should be dialed in, like you shouldn't be bidding on irrelevant things. That should be a variable that's controlled. So assuming that is controlled, which is in, in the wheelhouse of the PPC manager, the, then the biggest thing that influences click-through rate is gonna be all of those product-based metrics. So click-through rate is the one with the asterisk here because it's influenced by a lot of non-PPC things. So it's, you know, sitting in this theoretical boardroom, going around the table, what can we do to boost our sale, overall sales? Hey, our click-through rate could be higher. That could be a conversation and a collaboration between the PPC people, like, hey, this is what I'm targeting, so on and so forth. Here's maybe even a report of when we are going after these key keywords, what are we appearing next to? So we need to think about how to boost our own click-through rate via product title, image, star rating, price. Yeah, that's exactly the story for conversion rate as well for the most part. I think uh, targeting does play a big role. Like I don't want people to think that Michael and I are sitting here saying, you know, hey, these are out of, control, out of our control because again, purple pen is my evergreen example because it's always in my hand. If I have a purple pen and I'm targeting blue marker, my conversion rate's probably gonna be crap, my click through rate's gonna be crap because customers are gonna see my ad but they're not gonna click in because it's not relevant or they will click in and they're not gonna buy because they were looking for a marker and they maybe didn't pay attention that's a pin. So like those are examples of where it's our job as a PPC manager to be really relevant or to optimize the bid for poor relevancy so that we can still be profitable. But at the end of the day, like keyword research is easy in all honesty, like I think people overcomplicate it. You just find keywords that are related to your product. And if a customer clicks on your ad, there was interest. That's the part where I get super, super preachy. Even if I have a purple pin and I'm targeting red pin, if someone sees my purple pin and clicked on the ad, they took the time to view my listing, they were interested in the product or they were not paying attention. They accidentally clicked in, which is understandable, but put yourself into the shoes of your customer. Whenever you go to Amazon and you click on a listing, you're interested in that listing, regardless if it's considering whether or not you're going to buy in store, comparing prices. That's the beauty of Amazon. It's the most ridiculously high purchase intent possible. So that takes a lot of the risk off of a PPC manager. You just have to be really good at bid optimization. So when we talk about conversion rate, I think that's super important because brands will say, hey, these are my top five keywords. Why is my ACOS 300%? And I look into it and there's two variables that are really gonna influence why your ACOS is so high. That's your cost per click, which your PPC manager can and should be optimizing and relaying to you. But two, it's your conversion rate. And oftentimes I'll hop in and say, you're not converting on your number one keyword. And they're like, well, optimize it. <laughs> well. If people are clicking on your number one keyword and not buying it, you're not gonna get organically ranked for it because they don't even want your product after clicking on it. So that can be a really hard conversation to have. And then like the small conversations after are why am I not converting well? Or if we do drop CPCs because conversion rate's bad, it's why am I not driving sales? This keyword used to drive sales three years ago and it used to be profitable. I'm like, well, things were a lot cheaper and competition was a lot lower. So it's just really important to understand like how much a good listing affects good PPC performance because driving the traffic's the easy part. You just pick keywords that are related to your product. That traffic lands on your listing but does not buy your product. There's only so much we can do other than lower the bid. And nowadays lowering a bid typically means cutting off impressions. So it's lose, lose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So sitting in this theoretical boardroom where we have the owner of the company asking what we can do to grow sales. Uh, 
There's actually, I think, a new workflow, like a new conversation to have around these things. Um, and they involve uh, a report that Elizabeth Green and I talked about a couple episodes ago, which is the search query dashboard. I think the search query dash search query performance dashboard has been around for uh, maybe a few months at this point, like maybe three months or so. And I think this highlights new ways to understand where PPC fits into the broader scheme of things. So it's like, I think the, you know, that question that we're trying to answer, like we're asking all the growth managers at the company, what we can do to grow. I think the search query dashboard is a really interesting place to begin. Um, so it's been out for a couple of months now. Uh, how have you been using it and how does it sort of relate to this conversation we're having about you know, how do we generally grow and how do we pull in different air, different growth engines and different levers we can pull on? So in the past, we would use the targeting tab pretty heavily and say, hey, these are the top five highest spinning targets. They have a beautiful column that has conversion rate nowadays. And we would say, this is how you're converting. Um, that helped to drive really healthy conversations of, hey, you're not converting well here. We can't try to win this inventory even if you want to because customers are just clicking and not buying. So that was kind of the foundation that we started building out for having this. But then brand metrics became a bigger part of the conversation. And what brand metrics allowed us to see was category conversion rates. So we could you know, segment into a subcategory and say, hey, our average conversion rates 10%. Our, our category average is 20%. We're converting so much lower. Again, we should not be driving traffic because our customers aren't converting. That was awesome because now we have, you know, advertising conversion data on the search term level overlaid with category conversion data. Well, then we got the search query report, which now allows us to see our conversion on the search term level. Caveat, it's not on the ASIN level, so that can be a pain, but typically you know where your hero ASINs are and what keywords or search terms they should be showing up for. So what search query has allowed us to do is take the search term level, which is organic, and take your brand conversion rate and overlay it again with your category conversion rate for your number one search terms. So we'll pull that and we'll just highlight, hey, where are we converting better than category? Those are the keywords we should probably be pushing in ranking campaigns. And then we'll set up our ranking campaigns and then we'll segment it by, again, the other data that we've given. On the flip side, if I hop in there and see my categories converting three times better on my main search terms, probably shouldn't try to drive traffic because it's just gonna be a pay to play situation and we're gonna lose money. So that's how we've kind of combined the three of them. Now I will say, it's not easy to do this. I think that's a really important thing to note. We'll talk about this probably later, later when we talk about some of the new rollouts, but Agencies who have to pull all of these different reports typically have to scrape them, export them, and manipulate the data. So as a brand owner, it's not easy to see, and that's where I think things get lost in translation is it's a lot of work to make sure you're running at this level of granularity because Amazon doesn't make it easy. There's not an API that allows you to say, hey, here's my search query overlaid with my Amazon data. Here's the output. We have to manipulate and pull this. And when you have hundreds of thousands of ASINs, it's not easy. For sure. Yeah. Um, and it's not easy from literally a mechanical component, like literally just wrangling all these different reports and overlaying them uh, is time consuming and tricky. I don't, I don't even think there's an export function on search query. Mm -hmm. yeah, copy, no. copy and paste into a Google Sheets. Copy and paste into a Google Sheet for sure. And I mean, you have to, if you want to see anything close to month over month. Um, so yeah, so the way that... Um, to answer that question about how to incorporate the search query performance dashboard, which by the way is a subsection of brand analytics, uh, most of the time it'll be a green bar on the brand analytics page. But um, the way that I think it could be so valuable in answering that general business question, bringing it down to PPC, pulling in other levers from outside of PPC, is to really say, you know, to look at those top 10. 20, 25 keywords, and then begin to ask questions about it. Begin to ask questions like, hey, why do we only have X percent conversion rate? Why do we only have X percent clicks 
on this particular search term. That should lead to fantastic conversations. And that should lead to conversations from writing the product title to make it more clickable, to evaluating the product image to make it more clickable. It might bring in a conversation about price optimization to make it more clickable, to boost conversion rate. And then from the PPC side, you want to ask the PPC people, okay, what metrics can we control from the PPC side? Well, it's like, okay, we can drive more traffic to it. Can we drive more traffic to it? Uh, here's how we can. That's a KPI um, we didn't talk about. Do it. Well, yeah, I was kind of just like adding a little parentheses to your comment, but um, I think you're, you're spot on once that conversion rate's there. It's, hey, how do we drive more traffic? Let's look at our impression share for our top keywords. Do we have room to grow within the market? It's using small things like the, I think it's the category share with search query. I actually have it pulled up in order to make sure our brand share is growing for that search term. Those are, that's where strategy gets exciting in pay-per-click nowadays is we have some of those opportunities to start focusing on market share, but that organic piece has to be there. We have to be optimized, ready to go, or else it just turns into being pay to play. And that's a dangerous game to play with Amazon advertising because as we know, things are getting quite a bit more expensive and you can lose a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I think like having that conversation because it's it's as clear as we've ever been to real first party data directly from Amazon, how am I doing on a particular search term? And then you ask the PPC like, hey, how can we influence that? And the way that PPC can influence that is by changing impressions, changing clicks, changing our budget allocation for that term, uh, changing a target A cost for that term. Do we want to step step on it and get more aggressive? Do we want to really be strong in our placements for it to yeah. ensure that we're in top of search for it uh, no matter what? So like those kinds of things are super valuable. And then you bring in conversations from other people. And like those are the things that the most successful people on Amazon that I've met are doing. They're not just viewing PPC as the only driver now. And, and it wasn't really clear before because a lot of times like the ad console had the most data available on a keyword basis, but this report lives in brand reports. Uh, it's a search query on the entire company. So you're able to sort of see, okay, this is, this is how I'm performing PPC and organic, and I need to move this. And I know that, you know, PPC is not going to be in charge of my product title and product image and so on and so forth, but they are going to be in charge of a whole bunch of other factors, which we've mentioned. And like, that's how you pull a lot out of knowing what each growth engine in the company is for. Uh, this is like the spirit of what we're trying to get to in this episode. hundred percent. And I think that's also a good segue into Amazon's release a lot of this new data for us, you know, the search query, the organic side, it's no longer being scraped and manipulated. It's real and actual data. And I think that's a good indicator in the direction Amazon's going. They see the landscape, they see things getting more competitive. They see e-commerce slowing down a little bit in a return to in stores. And all of that means that brands need more data to continue to invest in the platform. And Amazon knows that, and they are giving us more and more opportunities to own our data and to make better decisions. And I think that leads to a really cool announcement-ish of one of the newest rollouts from last week, 10 days ago, right? Mm-hmm, pretty recent. Pretty recent, do you wanna dive in? You're more technical marketing? than I am. Are we talking about marketing stream? <laughs> right. We can talk about we can talk about marketing stream. I have a lot of thoughts on marketing stream. I'll probably want to do a full episode dive on this, but um, yeah, I mean we can we can touch on it here too. So for a long time, and we've talked about this on the show too, about don't do day parting because you have no idea what the performance is per hour. Like the data literally wasn't available, and it's not available in Ad Console yet. Uh, however, they're releasing a new API, and that's pretty cool because now you can see this sort of hourly based data only for sponsored products only for us yeah. canada mexico um, yeah so again it's one of the it's one of these things it's, it's a little frustrating that it's not available in the console so we're talking about something that's sort of exclusive to tools only 
But um, yeah, it's just another layer to see what we can do to sort of touch on all these like core metrics. So again, it's like, what can you do to boost these KPIs that you're responsible for? So it's like maybe during certain times of day, you step on the gas and, you know, get more aggressive with your CPC bids for the purposes of getting more impressions, more clicks, spending more budgets at times when conversion rate is a little bit higher. Um, again, huge asterisks, huge asterisks here. Uh, it really only becomes super valuable at higher levels of spend. Sometimes I'll have conversations with people that are spending $20 a day talking about day parting. It's like, well, <laughs> actually, you know, any data that you're looking at is probably st statistically insignificant. That's another word for random. <laughs> um, so it's, it's hard to pin down. But yeah, this is a new thing that um, I can't wait to see the evolution of this, uh, have it get more accessible. And uh, I've got some ideas for it myself. What do you think of it? I love all the asterisks provided here because <laughs> anyone who is in our space and in tune with the industry probably saw a post about Amazon marketing stream in the last 10 days. Anyone who's active on LinkedIn, in a lot of the big groups saw a post. And the reason this was so big is as mentioned by Michael, this hasn't been available before. So anyone who's thought day parting was advantageous in the last six months, go back and listen to Michael and I's podcast on why it's not. And the main reason being is this data has been assumed. People have been actually scraping ad console, figuring out how their hourly performance was and due to attribution, that's not an accurate way to look at it. So even companies who said day parting was fantastic, no one has had access to this data. No one has had legitimate access to this data. And I think that was a misconception in the space because it's a nice, fun, shiny object to say you're running day parting. But last week, that data became available. So small things like hourly conversion rate is now easily accessible. If you follow PackView, Perpetua, Michael, Joe Shellerud, all of these people who have the development teams to access the data can have really amazing reporting. So budget utilization becomes a different story. CPCs versus time of day become a really different story. Conversion rate, all of that is now able to be accessible. Um, but there are so many caveats to this. Like even the case studies that have been provided are just incremental. And these are with like millions of dollars of spend a month brands and they're only seeing incremental differences. And again, it's a purchase intent model. I don't care if you get more clicks at 12 o'clock at night who aren't converting. Why do you shop at 12 o'clock at night? Like you still go to Amazon because you're interested in buying a product. You just don't buy it until the next day at 8 a.m. when you have your card available. So I think those are the factors of customer habits that still make this super interesting. But having access to the data is just an indicator of the direction Amazon is going. So it's super, super exciting. Um, there's a price tag attached to it, I am pretty clear on, but a lot of opportunity for the future of Amazon advertising. Yeah, I'm still, I'm, don't get me wrong, I'm definitely bullish on hourly data just because, uh, you know, I look at Amazon advertising's old cousin, older cousin, Google ads, and like that's data that they've had forever. Also, shout out to all the Amazon advertisers who used to work on Google ads. Uh, I think anyone who's done that, I've mentioned this before on the show, but I think anyone who's done Google ads in the past automatically has a leg up over someone who didn't, all things being equal, like on day one, who, who's going to be ahead? Uh, it's the Google ads person because the Google ads people have all had all these sort of different things, different bids for mobile, tablet, desktop, different bids for hour of the day. That's like straight basic Google ads forever. All of those like rule based optimization, like on Sundays, like reduce my budget by 50%. That stuff was par for the course on Google ads. So I just think like exposure to that helps with exposure to all these things. I know it helps me a lot. And of course, if you didn't have that background, like pay more attention to, to Amazon ads. Yeah. Um, so I'm still bullish on it because it's still awesome. And like seeing the heat map of like when clicks, orders, so on and so forth come through, it's going to be sweet. Um, there's also another thing in the marketing stream data. You're going to be able to get per placement data per keyword. So it's like, oh, I know how this keyword performed in top of search versus other places. 
I, they didn't make a mention of per keyword placement bid inside the same campaign. It still seems like it's a per campaign thing, but they might start reporting it per keyword, which is neat. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty bullish on it. I think we'll have stuff in, in the next few weeks on it, which I'm pretty excited about. Yeah, it's awesome. It's even if it's not relevant to brands now, because it doesn't make sense for your size or you don't have, you don't have the money to invest in a software that is utilizing this data. That's, that's okay. Because even people like us who are managing, you know, the millions of dollars of spend, maybe don't need to activate it just yet, but I think it's all about the opportunity and the direction Amazon's going and how much access they're giving us and just a little bit more control is a really exciting thing for all of us who have been in the Amazon game for six years when yeah. you didn't have any of that control. So yeah, fun things. for sure. So I think to summarize this episode, the big things I think I want people to walk away with for this episode is going to be picture yourself in that figurative boardroom. You have all every single Imagine you had a single person for every single department, every single thing, your finance team, so on and so forth, product research, market research, data analyst, PPC, SEO, copywriting, branding. And when you ask questions like, what can we do to grow? And you get around the table to the PPC team, their answers are always going to be, I can boost impressions, I can boost clicks, I can change CPCs, which will influence ACOS, ROAS, orders, and of course, I can play with targeting and placements. I can find new opportunity that maybe uh, converts better or maybe is more advantageous for us when we appear on those search results or with those products. Those are the things that the PPC person should be in charge of. And the other takeaway is you can u now use the search query dashboard to fine tune that conversation as well. Uh, a brand owner could look at the search query dashboard, see their top terms, and recognize that there's opportunity there and then again, go around the table. And when it comes to the PVC person, they can say, okay, for this search term, I'm going to push it, boost impressions, boost clicks, increase our CPC for it, which should increase orders, change up our placement, I'll go harder on top of search. Like those are the conversations that I think are going to be super valuable for anyone wanting to grow. That's my summary and more data coming. <laughs> more data coming, asterisk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, any final thoughts about this? This is one that always gets us fired up. No, I don't think so. I would say if you're in this position of not knowing what the next move is, like comment. I think Michael and I are both really responsive and really understand that there's so many variables that go into running a brand. And that's what makes our jobs fun is there's not a one size fits all solution for PPC. A lot of what we're doing is having to be reactive based off a brand's goals, a brand's needs and everything that's going into the organic side of the business. So if you're sitting in this position of like, hey, here are my top line metrics, what do I do next? Is this a PPC problem? Is it an organic problem? Like put it in the comments and we'll always try to get back and like help and just really give you a, not an answer. I don't think an answer is the right way, but give you some direction to, hey, pull these things, have this type of conversation with your PPC manager and that will help make a more holistic strategy as the corporate people like to say. <laughs> and with that, Destiny, thank you so much for coming back on the show. Thank you uh, again for sharing. Uh, Destiny from Better AMS. Ooh. Best place for people to find you, I believe, is LinkedIn. Um, you're so generous and gracious with your shares on there. So everyone should be following you. Um, I always think it's funny, like uh, in Austin, there's a lot of people that I know who are like Instagram influencers. And it's, I'm always just like, oh yeah, I know a couple LinkedIn influencers. Um, <laughs> so with that, have a good one and hopefully see you soon here on the PPC Den podcast. Thank you.